Good morning and welcome back to the channel. Steve here again, ready to crack on, eager to crack on. So, in case you didn't catch up on yesterday's, here is the five by three rhombus room, rhomboid. Yeah, all right, Dad, you'll get that joke. Um, so today is going to be a day of getting the front walls in. So I'll show you how I kind of do that. I mean, essentially, we've got four independent walls because we've got like a pane of glass door, pane of glass. Um, but I'll show you how I do that and why I do it the way I do it. Um, I've got all my materials, I'm already set up. This is the five foot two, which is what I shall be making the front wall out of. A bit bigger than the rest of it because obviously you've got the apertures and stuff and you've got the steel set on top of it. So you just want something a bit, bit stronger, a bit tougher. Uh, I've already laid them all out, got them up nice and tight. I've now got the crown, which is basically the curve going up and down that way, all the same way. The other good thing about doing this is, like I say, when you kind of put them up next to each other, you get a good feel about like any twists and bows like some have got. So basically this one, it's got quite a lot of bows, but that's fine. That'll be a noggin one, so that's to the side. So this way you don't accidentally use, say, a slightly twisted one. You're trying to build your wall and you get it up and you think, oh, bloody hell. Now, I wish I didn't use that one. By doing this, you kind of pre saw it. It takes you two minutes to do. And now I know that all these are the perfect way up. I will mark them with a little C on this top edge. So I know that that is the crown, just in case I don't twist them or whatever one I'm going to cut them. But I shouldn't do because they come from here straight to here straight to there again workflow just try and keep it so that all your materials are in roughly the right place it just kind of keeps flows opposed to going over here to there to there to there to there you know what i mean just it's silly but it speeds you up it really does um so i'm gonna start getting this lot kind of measured up and stuff and then i'll see you in a minute right now obviously like i said a moment ago i have four independent walls okay but i'm still going to give a base plate and a head okay now, the reason I'm going to do that is because it makes life a bit bloody easier. If when you're working with three, uh, sorry, four individual walls that are going to be just about sort of 40 centimetres big, so not massive, you build this one, great, you build the others, you get them up and they're kind of obviously fliggity fliggity. You're trying to like level them independently. You're going to have to put something across the head anyway to kind of brace it and support it and keep it in place before the steel turns up or you get your OSB3 on the front. So what I find is it's easier just to kind of put the base in turn it aside and build the stud walls like I normally would to the measurements. And that way, what you find is that it's a lot more rigid. I can just raise that one wall up into place, secure it both ends, level it, and then that's it. All I have to do then is just chop out where the door is gonna be and the windows off the floor. But you've built one big wall, which means the other thing you'd have to do if you did the independent walls, which I've done loads of times, is then run a string line from the front, both ends, because you then need to make sure that those walls are perfectly aligned so that um, if they weren't like, if you've got a big bit of wood, for example, across those four independent walls, those walls would have to be touching that bit. Otherwise, they're gonna kind of deviate just off it a bit, which would just be a pain when you try and put your doors and windows in. So by doing this, you have that already in place, ready to rock, you know the wall is straight, done, easier. So I've already cut these so they fit into the aperture. And if you notice here, I've already got door edge, window edge, window so what i'll do now is i'll just put that level with that mark off where the window's gonna go there there the door edge door edge and then what i'll do is the same as i did before that'll be my marks for the equivalent of my 400 turn it on its side get the head plate do the same mark off across both and that's it i can go away with a mixer and just crack on i won't do the gang cutting today because there's only like a couple of bits and pieces so i'll do it on the chop saw but that's essentially it so i will show you that as i go Right, so now you can see I've marked where the window's going to be. Got my uh, straight triangle, tri straight, <laughs> straight line, boom. There's one wall, there's the other wall. So basically, that's one wall there. That section is going to be a window. This section from here to here is going to be the door. So that bit's a uh, little wall and a little wall down that end. Now, when I've done this, it's about a uh, two mil gap between this wall and that wall. When you're marking it, don't forget to butt these up against that wall tight. So when you grab these ones and you do your marks, grab them, butt them up there, because otherwise, I mean, again, it's two mil. It's not gonna make a huge difference in great tolerances of light life, but it just means you know that that is still in line with that perfectly, go through there, and it's not gonna be off center slightly because you didn't quite budget that way. Um, 
So what I'll do now is, once we put the head up there, I'll cut some um, studs to the right length, and then nail gun them in, done and dusted. Easy peasy. Right, studs all cut, ready to rock and roll. So same as yesterday, when you nail them, you want to make sure that you keep the um, that nice and tight. If there's a slight bow going this way, just keep your pressure on it, just to line it all up nicely. Now, very important, um, because I just forgot this as well. So we all do it. Where I've got my lines marked, they're actually for the aperture, okay? So unlike when you're doing your 400 centers, you put the stud through the center of your mark. On this one, I want to make sure that I put it to the side of the mark, because the, the mark actually represents the window aperture, where the window's going. So if I put my stud to the center of it, I've just closed up my own aperture. So I started filming, and I was like, oh, happy days, boom, boom, boom. It's like, oh, bloody hell. I only put three nails in, so it wasn't too bad. Just like being aware of what you're doing and why you're doing it. <laughs> it's quite useful. So there we go. So I line that one up with the pencil mark this time. <laughs> Much better. And the benefit is, I know my window will fit. And then just being aware as well that you know which side of the mark you needed to put your bit of wood. So that side is over to the left, this side is over to the right. And because this is technically in two sections, I'll get this one made and get it up, then I'll get that one made, get it up and just level them off to each other and that'll be absolutely spot on. So he's lifting the whole thing in one fell swoop. Wouldn't weigh too much, but just makes life a bit easier. Right. Get the face on. Sometimes you put your knee on it, put a bit of body weight on just to push this one down if you need to. Always comes now, it. There you go. That wall is now done. I should get that up and spot on. But what you also have to do sometimes, nail guns don't always finish them off. So there's a couple in the bottom here that just need a tap. And another little thing. You want to what? <gasps> yes. That was a cool thing. So I had my delivery of uh, roof joists just turn up. So I loads of seven by two. So that's like happy days. Always nice to have it on site. Right. I can't remember what that top, other top tip was going to be now. But it doesn't matter. I'm sure we'll come back to me at some point. But there you go. This one is now in. We've tapped in the nails, I think, quite far correctly. So now we just lift it up. Really, it is, isn't it? So basically, get it in position, roughly. Bit of gentle persuasion. Get that one out of the way for the minute. All I'm going to do is get it to the front where I want it tight, make sure it's kicked up against the bottom of this wall here. I don't care about that level that way too much in a second. That's fine. As long as it's like level with the floor where I'm going to want it. And then what I'll do is, again, I stick one nail in it at the bottom in the corner. That kind of keeps it in place for the minute. And then that'll just stay there for a bit. I'll get that one made, get that one up, and then level it all off, secure it down both sides to these walls, and then I'll go around with a reciprocating saw and chop out the bases. But do you see what I mean? Eh? You can't figure it that, you know, if I built this wall independently, and that one, and that one, and that one, I've got like four wibbly wobbly sort of walls going like that. So this way, I've now got a nice wall that is now ready to take the steel, 
and everything is happy days. Beautiful. Right, folk. So what I've done now is I've got this wall level at the front here. I then, because I'm saying with two independent pieces, so all I do now is get me level on the front, make sure that's all buttoned up nice, that one isn't twisting further out or going at weird angles. And that is basically absolutely gorgeous. So now all I do is put nails in, not the wrong side of it because I've got to chop it, so that bit's coming out. So. So that's what I mean. If these were four independent walls, essentially, you'd have to kind of go around and try and get them all lined up nicely. But look, because it's just one big base plate, one big top plate, they're all going to run absolutely beautifully in line with each other every time. So it just saves a lot of faffing later on. So what I could do now is I run around, level all these corners off of each other, put a nail gun through to secure it. Uh, same for this side. And then once I'm happy with where it's sitting, I will then Go through, chop this out with a super cane saw there. Same for the window, same for the window. Done. That is the front wall up and ready to receive the steel across the top. So, yeah, happy days, perfect. It's not complicated, it's just pre thinking about it. And like you can see, there's my line, whereas this side, so that my aperture remains the same size. Excellent. Other thing I like to do, when you're securing these two corners to one another, take an O-wing grip or whatever grip you've got, check roughly where your level's going to be. So if I pin that onto that one, where that's sitting, pretty much spot on already. And then what I'll do is to the centre, I'll just give it a little grippy grippy. So that then holds it together for you. Just double check your level, I can do that from this side now, perfect, so that way that's holding that in place, so I can literally now fire in a few now, and what I'll also do is I've got some 250 200 and 100 tech screws. I use the 100 tech screw and I'll put one through that way and one through that way every so often just to pin this front wall in to this wall both sides uh, just because it is a load bearing mine it's got the steel on everything else I just want to make sure these are definitely happy connected ain't gonna go nowhere and then that's it so that is now leveled that'll be leveled all leveled all the way around so that is it so now I can go chop these out later on I'll probably leave them in for the minute to be honest uh, and I'll start getting some OSB on the walls now to kind of close it up a little bit. Tell a lie, I'll put the noggins in first, that'd be good. I'll do the noggins first, then I'll do some OSB. But either way, that is a front wall, for all intents and purposes, done. Yes. OSB now, so I'm going to try and close the walls off. So, there you go. The first bit is now up and in. A couple of little top tips when you're doing this. Okay, so when I was on the other side of it, you're going to make me go around it now, aren't you? All right, fine. So, once you head around the back, I've taken my measurement off the end of the stud to the centre of this stud, and that's 88. So, again, you want to fall and finish on the end of one. For some reason, as somebody in the comments will tell me, because I can't remember, this is all imperial. So, it's actually 1.22 metres wide. So, now I've got my centre stud. The next one will fall exactly 1.2, but I just need to chop off 20 mil. So that it'll fall straight in the centre. Um, the benefits of doing this on your tod, well, so the benefits, one of the, the, the little helpers is that the metal shoes here that just protrude is perfect for like resting the board on, which means you're not trying to hover it in midair and trying to pin it. Um, you can see that this is a lot taller than, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim the 20mm off of them every time, get them all up, and then I'll just run across the top with the reciprocating saw and just take off that top piece. It's just easy in trying to faff around and do it down here, it's up, it's in, it's done, and then I can just follow the line perfectly. Oh look, there's a screw sticking out. But wait, that's there for a reason. So, 
I'm trying to sometimes figure out where your center ones are. I mean, it's different. I wanted to do this as a demonstration. I know that my 400 from there will be there, but sometimes you forget or they're not quite in the right place because this might be the end of the wall or whatever. Top tip is if you put a screw in next to the vertical stud, where that comes out, I now know, I just offset it at about 20 mil, draw a vertical line, and I'll just fire my nails straight down, job done. So then I'll just go on the other side, unscrew that nail, uh, screw, sorry, and that's it, perfect. But I've now I've hit them every single time, I'm not trying to guess and trying to figure it out, because what you end up doing is, you end up firing a load of nails, and they end up sticking out weird angles and bits and pieces across here, and then you kind of, well, I always then go with a normal disc cutter, because there was a few that missed, disc cutter, cut them down, it just minimizes that, you're keeping it as accurate as possible. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get the next full board, chop the 20 mil off it, and just run the length, firing these in, and then carry it down the side walls. Right, there you go. Now you can see the OSB is now on all the walls, all the way around. You can see that it's now above here. So that's gonna be roughly where my steel is gonna be. Um, now, basically starting the roof. So as you can see, here's one of my roof joists. It's not fit yet, I just put it up there. So you can see where, where my OSB now overhangs by miles. I can now run a pencil mark down the bottom because I now have my exact angle, allowing for the fall, which is 25 millimeters per meter for the rain to run off of the roof. You can see the pencil mark already done here. So what I'll do is get a circular saw or my, rip, what do you call it, reciprocating saw, which is just here. Yes, it did rain for a little bit. I teamed it down, it did, flipping it. Horrible. Um, so that is going to be in the plan now. So I've got that mark, got that mark. So I'll get that chopped. So that's ready. And then I'll see if I cannot start getting a couple of roof joists in. So what I'll do is the first one will go in and it'll be, see here, it'll be in line with that. So basically, when I kind of drag this one across, there's a bit of a beast, this one. So you can see that. So that's sit just off centre to this one. So this one, this will be directly above it in this line. See what I mean? Does that make sense? Um, and then what I'll do is I'll drop one on every 400 mark so that although I've got the trimmers, the weight will still be bared straight down there. Also, added an extra trimmer at the top there and there because once I was able to then get these roof joists up, I was then able to do my final measurement for the overall height of the building and I could afford to bump it up by 45 mil and then still keep it under two and a half meter maximum. So, you know, when you kind of got to this stage where you're putting your roof joists in, you can really definitively check your calculations. And I generally try to undershoot it a little bit for the maximum height, just so that if there's any indiscrepancies or whatever, in this case, you, so you can make it taller if you need to, but trying to make it short with a pain in the ass. So always make it just a little bit shorter. Gives you a bit of leeway because then you can always just pad it up when you need to and you know you're definitely safe, you're definitely sorted, you're definitely under permitted building regulations then. Uh, so that is what I've done. So added an extra trimmer to the back and raised it a bit at the front, which is basically given this part a double trimmer, a double header, which is beautiful anyway. So that worked out really nice. So that is it. I'm going to start getting these cut and then see if I can get maybe the first one, maybe the second one fixed in place. And that gives me a good head start for tomorrow then. Very excellent. Right, that is it for the day. So there you can see all the OSB on at the front, like I just showed you, the roof joist. So that one is now ready to go up, as is that one. I've done a few extra bits of measuring and stuff like that. I've chopped the edges now, so the angle, the rake is now cut into it. And it is very nice, so I'm very happy. Been a good day, that. Uh, big shout out to Stuart, my client, for reminding me to do this video because I did nearly forget because uh, we were chatting and stuff. And I've been chatting to the neighbour as well, who's also lovely. Lovely neighbours around here. And I like that. It's nice to have a chat with people and get on. Uh, and that's it. So I'm off now. So I'll be back tomorrow, first thing at eight o'clock. Uh, whatever you're doing, enjoy. And don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, hit the bell icon, all those buttons and bells and whistles. Hit them all, because why not? It's good fun, right? Okay, I'll see you all later, guys. Take it easy.